Shalom, shalom, Devon Mays here with Clouds of Torah. And uh, today we're going to continue with the Israel and Hamas war. And um, so far I've covered foreign powers in Israel and how Israel has um, a history of being um, under control of other, other authorities. And when that happened, other people lived in the land and Israel had to interact with people living in their land and how they were treated and what they had to deal with. Um, I've shown in part three, um, Israel actually buying land back to, um, to the degree of, um, purchasing it, of uh, from absentee landlords, meaning the people who live there, I mean, the people who own the land lots of times didn't even own, didn't even, the people who lived in the land were not the owners of the land. And I've shown them purchasing it um, from the United Nations website, which would which actually um, lined up with what Wikipedia had to say on the matter. So the narrative of Israel just like rolling in with tanks and force and kicking people off the land is not a, uh, it's not true. It didn't it didn't happen like that. Um, Israel did conquer lands due to war. But I mean, they were attacked. So, I mean, what'd you expect them to do? This is not a turn the other cheek um, situation. Um, the Torah does not teach that Israel had an army in the Torah and they were told to fight when necessary. Um I showed in part two who should be living in the land, Jew or Gentile. There's requirements to live in the land, regardless of your um, your views on things. If you want to live in Israel, there's rules according to the Torah. And of course, I showed in the very first video who's actually to blame for the situation. So today, I'm going to um, be dealing with... Um, Who owns the land from a religious perspective? Like according to the religions of the world, for instance, um, the Torah and the Quran, since this is a Muslim Jewish situation at, at present, um, not to say that there aren't Christians and other religions in the in in, in, in Israel at the time, but overall. From a from a global perspective, this is a Jewish and a um, Islamic war. So, Israel, Hamas, and the Holy Land, Part Five. Who owns the Holy Land from a religious perspective? Genesis one one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So that would mean God has to say so. And who owns the land according to the Torah? Surah Al Araf seven fifty four. Uh, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing um, these um, words of the Quran. Indeed, your Lord is Allah who created the heavens and the earth. And in six days, when then established himself on the throne, he makes the day and night overlap in rapid succession. He created the sun, the moon and the stars, all subjected by his command. The creation and the command belong to him alone. Blesses Allah, Lord of all worlds. So according to the Torah and according to the Quran, if you hold that Allah is the same God of the Torah, if you hold that, if that's your position, then God is the rightful owner of the, the earth. Surah al Anbiya 2185. And remember, Ishmael, Enoch, and Zul Kifl, they were all steadfast. So, <clears throat> Scholars are in disagreement as to whether Zul Kifl was a prophet or just a righteous man. Those who maintain that he was a prophet identify him with various biblical prophets such as Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Obadiah. So um, if you view uh, Zul Kifl as one of these prophets, because again, it's a, there's disagreements, but let's say you think Zul Kifl is Ezekiel. What does Ezekiel say about the situation? 
Ezekiel 47, 21, thus you shall divide this land among yourselves according to the tribes of Israel. If you think Zulkifl is Isaiah, Isaiah 2, 1 through 3. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Now it shall come to pass that in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. Like I said before, anybody can live in Israel if you, as long as you obey the rules. Many people shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us all. He will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Jerusalem is in Israel. <clears throat> Obadiah. Very interesting verse. Obadiah 1, 10 through 12 for violence against your brother, Jacob. Yeah, there goes the word Hamas. Shame shall cover you, and you shall be cut off forever. And the day you stood on the other side, and the day that strangers carried captive his forces, when foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, even you were as one of them. Now, I'm not saying Obadiah was talking about what happened on October, October 7th, but we see <clears throat> that the prophet is saying about people who committed the crimes and people who stood by and watched. But you should have not have gazed on the day of your brother. You should not have gazed on the day of your brother and the day of his ca captivity. Nor should you have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. We see this all over the world. People are actually happy about what Hamas did. Colleges. Some people express joy for what they saw. It says, nor should you have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction, nor should you have spoken proudly in the day of distress. There's people who are praising this event. So Edom used violence. Um, what's a typo? Just as Arabs are using violence or Hamas against Israel today. So all the Palestinians are not Hamas, just to be clear. Many of them support Hamas, but not all of them are Hamas. And a lot of them live under fear under Hamas, and they're scared to speak out, just like anybody would if you lived under a you know oppressive regime. Um, so the fact that Obadiah is saying that Hamas was used against Jacob, and there are those who stood by and were happy about the destruction of the children of Judah and spoken, they were speaking proudly in the day of their distress. This is a problem. So again, if Zul Kiffel was a prophet or a righteous man, regardless in the Quran, if he is Ezekiel, Isaiah, or Obadiah, they all express where Israel is. And what should be done according to people who invade that land and distress Israel? It's something that shouldn't be done. <clears throat> so who participated with Israel to illegally divide the land? So we know today foreign powers have been involved with trying to make peace agreements with Israel. Joel 3, 2, I'll also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. So we see Joel is expressing the Most High is not happy with this. Leviticus 25 and 23, the land shall not be sold permanently, for the land is mine, for you are strangers and sojourners with me. So Israel is never allowed to sell that land, which means once it was theirs, it can be nobody else's. Now, had they not came and brought it back since they were in exile, it would have been looked upon as them still in the land. So they did. They went the right route and began to purchase the land. And I even showed that a lot of the land was not even inhabitable. 
so re or go back and look at my uh third video on this topic. Ezekiel 48, 14, and they shall not sell or exchange any of it that they may not alienate the best part of the land for it is holy to the Lord. So the land is holy to the most high and he gave it to Israel. So any peace agreement that told Israel to sell or give up its land is illegal. Once Israel had already purchased back parts of the land and conquered other parts during wars. So when Israel left Gaza for the sake of peace, they weren't supposed to do that. And you see the price that they paid for that. Gaza was turned into a base against them. And we seen we see the results of that from like 2006 till today. We see what happened when they gave up that land that they wasn't supposed to give up. So in Al Ma Ida 5 and 43. But why do they come to you for judgment when they already have the Torah containing Allah's judgment? So then they turn, it says, then they turn away after all. They are not true believers. So if anybody is a, a Muslim and you acknowledge the Quran, it tells you that Allah gave Israel judgment in the Torah, what they should be doing. So if you're going against that, are you going against the Quran? Al Maida 5:44. Indeed, we revealed the Torah containing guidance and light by which the prophets who submitted themselves to Allah made judgments for the Jews. Well, what were the judgments of the Jews? That they don't sell that land is their land. <clears throat> so why would anybody be screaming from the river to the sea if that land does not belong to them according to the Quran? So too did the rabbis and scholars judge according to Allah's book with which they were entrusted in which they were made keepers. So do not fear the people, fear me, nor trade my revelations for a fleeting gain. And those who do not judge by what Allah has revealed are truly the disbelievers. So if Allah revealed that the Torah was given to the Jews and that land was given to the Jews, why would any Muslim be calling for the destruction of Israel in their land to take their land? Surah 5, 20 through 21. And remember when Moses said to his people, oh, my people, remember Allah's favors upon you when he had raised prophets from among you, made you sovereign and gave you what he had never given anyone in the world. Oh, my people, enter the holy land, which Allah has destined for you to enter and do not turn back or else you will become losers. It says he had never given anyone in the world. The Holy Land. What is the Holy Land? Is it Israel? Remember when Moses said to his people, who is the people of Moses? Isn't it Israel? So according to the Quran, that land belongs to Israel. And they are never to give it to anybody else. Eunice 1090, we brought the children of Israel across the sea. Then Pharaoh and his soldiers pursued them unjustly and oppressively. But as Pharaoh was drowning, he cried out, I believe that there is no God except that in whom the children of Israel believe. And I am now one of those who submit. So there is no God except the one to whom the children of Israel believe. And what did he say? You are not to sell the land because it's really my land. But I gave it to Israel to divide up for Israel. Eunice 1093. Indeed, we settled the children of Israel in a blessed land, a.k.a. the Holy Land. And granted them good lawful provisions. They did not differ until judge, until knowledge came to them. Surely your Lord will judge between them on the day of judgment regarding their differences. We settled the children of Israel in a blessed land. Where was that blessed land that they were settled in? According to the Quran. So where is the land? We read that God, God, 
in the Torah and in the Quran said that he gave the Torah to Israel. So what did the Torah say about Israel? Genesis 12, 7, then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants, I will give this land. Where is the land that this that he's talking about here? And there he built an altar to the Lord where he had appeared to him. Deuteronomy 27, 3. You shall write on them all the words of this law when you have crossed over, that you may enter into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord your God, just as the Lord God of your fathers promised you. We just read in the Quran, we settled the children of Israel in a blessed land. The holy land, which Allah has destined for you to enter. Where is this? Is this Israel? Because if it is, then we got a problem with people chanting from the river to the sea that that land belongs to Palest Palestinians. Numbers 34 and 12. Remember, it says the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying to your descendants, I have given this land. Who is he talking about right here? Is he talking about the descendants of Israel? Or the descendants of Ishmael? Numbers 34 and 12, the border shall go down along the Jordan. It shall end at the salt sea. This shall be your land with its surrounding boundaries. When the book of Numbers was written, who was God talking to? Israel or Palestinians? Genesis 15, 18, on the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying to your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. Deuteronomy eleven twenty four. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads shall be yours, from the wilderness of wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even to the western sea, shall be your territory. Who is Numbers, Genesis, and Deuteronomy speaking about? Israel or the Palestinians? Because it says in the Quran that God gave Torah to who? Who did he give the Torah to? The Jews. <clears throat> All the territory of the Philistines. So what's this talking about? First Chronicles 18.3. And David defeated Hadadazar, king of Zobah, as far as Hamath, and he went to establish his power by the river Euphrates. So we see David was fighting battles and his kingdom went all the way to the Euphrates River, way over by Iraq. Joshua 13, 1 through 2. Now Joshua was old, advanced in years, and the Lord said to him, you are old, advanced in years, and there remains very much land yet to be possessed. This is the land that yet remains. All the territory of the Philistines and all that of the Geshurites. So if you're calling yourself a Palestinian because you think you're an ancient Philistine, that land that's to be possessed is to be possessed by Joshua's people. Joshua's people were not the Palestinians. What's the border crossing? First Kings 4 and 21. So Solomon reigned over all kingdoms from the river to the land of the Philistines. As far as the border of Egypt, they brought tribute and served Solomon all the days of his life. All the kingdoms from the river to the land of the Philistines, as far as the border of Egypt. What is the border to Egypt? Rapha, which is controlled by Egypt and does not border Israel. Does not border Israel. Today. Today. Right. Let's put that in perspective. According to Wikipedia, the Rafa border crossing or Rafa crossing point is the sole crossing point between Egypt and the Gaza, Gaza Strip. It is located on the Gaza Egypt border. But in the time of Solomon, all kingdoms from the river to the land of the Philistines, as far as the border of Egypt, were under his domain. So what happens to the Philistines if you want to be a Philistine, if you want to associate 
the Palestinians today with the ancient Philistines. Amos 1 and 8. I will cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod and the one who holds a scepter from Ashkelon. I will turn my hand against Ekron and the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, says the Lord God. Jeremiah 47, 4, because of the day that comes to plunder all the Philistines to cut off from Tyre and Sidon, every helper who remains for the Lord shall plunder the Philistines, the remnant of the country of Kaptor. So if you want to associate the Palestinians today with the ancient Philistines, you have a problem. And again, from a religious perspective, let's take politics out of this. If you hold to the Quran, which confirms the Torah, the Quran tells you to confirm the Gospels. And the Gospels, of course, get their information from the Torah. Well, some of it, not all of it. Then if you're going against this, then according to the Quran, are you a true believer? Do you want to be called a Philistine? Zechariah 9, 6, a mixed race shall settle in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. So <clears throat> this word for mixed race is a mongrel race. Which, if you break it down a little more, it says bastard from an unused root, meaning to alienate a mongrel born of a Jewish father and a heathen mother, a bastard, a mumser. And the Philistines will be cut off. If you acknowledge the Tanakh, the New Testament, and the Quran, how are you viewing these things? Are you listening to politicians? Are you listening to people who have re rewritten history? Zechariah 9, 5 through 8. Ashkelon shall see it in fear. Gaza, Gaza shall also shall be very sorrowful. And Ekron, for he dried up her expectation. The king shall perish from Gaza, and Ashkelon shall not be inhabited. A mixed race shall settle in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. I will take away the blood from his mouth and the abomination from between his teeth. But he who remains, even he shall be for our God, and shall be like a leader in Judah, and Ekron like a Jebusite. I will camp around my house because of the army, because of him who has passed by and him who returns. No more shall an oppressor, oppressor pass through them, for now I have seen with my eyes. So Gaza will be very sorrowful. I'm not saying what's going on today is the fulfillment of this prophecy. I'm not saying that. But if you want to associate the Philistines and Gaza of then to the people today, then Gaza will be very sorrowful. Because people like to use scripture at their convenience. I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. If this already happened, then the Palestinians today are not the Philistines and that's not their land. If you're saying that is for today, this this, this scripture is for today, the Philistines are going to be cut off. So what, which one are you going to pick? Isaiah 11, 12 through 14, he shall set up a banner. He will set up a banner for the nations and he will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And also the envy of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not harass Ephraim, but they shall fly down upon the shoulder of the Philistines toward the west. And together they shall plunder the people of the east, and they shall lay their hand on Edom and Moab, and the people of Ammon shall obey them. So this is a messianic prophecy. The outcasts of Israel will be assembled. Their enemies are going to be cut off. And guess what? They shall fly down upon the shoulder of the Philistines toward the west. Do you really want to associate the Palestinians with the Philistines?
or you just using that term because that's what the the British called it. But who lived there when Israel began to return? Who owned the land when Israel began to return? Watch my number three video, buying back the land. Who was the land purchased from? Who controlled Gaza and the West Bank from 1948 to 1967? And the, did the Palestinians have war with them before Israel controlled that land? So the argument is, well, one argument is Israel was exiled for disobedience, so they gave the land back, right? They when, when you get kicked out of the land, nobody's there. Okay. Leviticus 20 and 22. You should therefore keep all my statutes and my judgments and perform them that the land where I'm bringing you to dwell may not vomit you out. So it's true. There was a point in time Israel didn't live there as a nation. It could be some, you know, some stragglers. But overall, the nation was kicked out in exile by Rome for, you know, back in 70 AD when the, Rome destroyed the temple and warred with Israel. But again, if you acknowledge the prophets, Isaiah 52 and 8, your watchmen shall lift up their voices and with their voices they shall sing together for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion. Ezekiel 37, 21 through 22, then say to them, thus says the Lord God, surely I would take the children of Israel from among the nations, wherever they have gone, and will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land. Bring them into their own land. Where is that land at according to the Quran and the Torah? Where is it at? And I will make them one nation in the land, on the mountains of Israel. On the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king over them all, and they shall no longer be two nations, nor shall they be divided into two kingdoms again. No two nations, no two-state solution. There is no two-state solution in the Tanakh. In the future. And when there was, it was Israel divided amongst itself the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Ten tribes and two tribes. But it was all Israel. Judah and Israel. But it says, they shall no longer be two nations. So no two-state solution. Nor shall they ever be divided into two kingdoms again. No, there's going to be one king in their own land on the mountains of Israel. I will take the children of Israel from among the nations and will bring them into their own land. So I'm going to return back to this verse about what we see going on today. This is relevant because this is exactly what's happening today. For Hamas, for violence against your brother Jacob. Because a lot of people don't know. Some do, but a lot of people don't know. Israel and Ishmael are related. Yeah, we're going to get to that. We're going to go into that history too. Yes. For Hamas against your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you and you shall be cut off forever. In the day that you stood on the other side, in the day that strangers carry captive his forces, Today, it, what did Hamas do? They kidnapped people. Foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem. Not necessarily cast lots for Jerusalem, but even you were as one of them. But you should not have gazed on the day of your brother and the day of his captivity. People were taken captive. Nor should you have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their dest destruction. People rejoiced over that. Nor should you have spoken proudly in the day of distress. People are having a ball with this situation. You should not have entered the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Indeed, you should not have gazed on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. You should not have stood at the crossroads to cut off those from among them who escaped, nor should you have delivered up those among them who remain in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord upon all nations is near, 
as you have done, it should be done to you. Your reprisal should return upon your own head. So everybody who's happy about this, your reprisal shall return upon your own head. Didn't y'all read Proverbs? Don't be happy the day your enemy falls. It's not You're not supposed to rejoice the day your enemy falls. Go back and read Proverbs. So there's rules of engagement before war. You don't just wage war. Genesis 32, 3 through 5. Then Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, in the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Speak thus to my lord Esau. Thus your servant Jacob says, I have dwelt with Laban and stayed there until now. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, and male servants, and I have sent them to my lord that I might find favor in your sight. So Jacob knew Esau was coming with 400 men. So what did he do? He let them know who he'd been living with. He let them know what he was holding. And he let them know, I don't want to fight you. But of course, if I have to, I will. So rules of engagement is first you offer gifts or compliments or uh, peace, right? Um. He even says, he even calls himself your servant. And basically, when he says, I have stayed with Laban, Laban had a little bit of pull. There's a lot of history to Laban as well, but he's basically saying, I've been able to stay with Laban and I have all this stuff. On top of that, He's kind of telling him that I don't have the things you think I have. Because if you know the backstory, there were some blessings that he was given. And he's trying to let Esau know, look, I'm not as prosperous as you think I should be. So you shouldn't be so jealous of me. You shouldn't be mad. And I don't want to fight. I want to find favor in your sight. And he sent them gifts. Of course, Esau turned them down. But Jacob was told by the Most High to go back home. So when he encountered Esau, he could have thought, you know what? God's with me. But I got my family. Like, I, I really don't want to fight this dude. God's with me, so I'm probably going to win because he told me to go back home and I trust him. But I don't want to. So let me let me take a different route. And it worked. Deuteronomy 20 and 2. So it shall be when you are on the verge of battle that the priest shall approach and speak to the people. So today you don't have a, a high priest in Israel. But you do have leaders. You do have rabbis. You do have judges. And if they ran that military, according to the Torah, Israel would be undefeated. Nobody would ever beat them in a fight. Deuteronomy 17, 8 through 9. If a matter arises which is too hard for you to judge between degrees of guilt or for bloodshed, between one judgment or another, or between one punishment or another, matters of controversy within your gates, then you shall rise and go up to the place which the Lord your God chooses. And you shall come to the priests, the Levites, and to the judges there in those days and inquire of them, and they shall pronounce upon you the sentence of judgment. So Israel really shouldn't be asking the politicians what to do in any given situation. They should be consulting the rabbis. Deuteronomy 20, 10 through 12, when you go near a city to fight against it. So now if you know I have to fight, you go to in the city to fight against it, proclaim an offer of peace to it, just like Jacob did in Genesis. 
And it should be that if they accept your offer of peace and open to you, then all the people who are found in it shall be placed under tribute to you and serve you. Now, if the city will not make peace with you, but war against you, then you shall besiege it. So you offer them peace. If they don't want to have peace and serve you, they're, they're, they're welcome to leave as well. But if they want to stay, then they have to serve you. But if they don't want to have peace and they want to fight, you shall besiege it. So there's rules of engagement. And we definitely <laughs> didn't see Hamas try this tactic to make peace first. And <clears throat> why would <clears throat> Israel go and try to make peace with people before they take the land because God told them to take the land from people who were worshiping idols and sacrificing their children in the fire to these idols. Read about all the abominations that the Canaanites were doing in the land. And they were even given a, a, uh, an extension of mercy because in back in Genesis, it says the, the, the iniquity of the Amorites is not full yet. That's why Israel couldn't take the land at that specific time. God had mercy on the people to repent and they never repented. So it's not like the Canaanites were this righteous nation and all of a sudden Israel came and took their land. No. Because people say, well, it's called the land of Canaan. Yeah, it was. But guess what? Shem was getting, given an inheritance as well. Where was Shem's inheritance? Ham, Shem, and Japheth. All, all of them were, read the table of nations. Everybody was given an allotment of lands. Were Canaanites dwelling in any of the lands of Shem? And even if they were not, again, according to the Torah and the Quran, who does the land belong to? And God gives it to whoever he wishes to. When Israel got out of line, they got kicked out too. There's no discrimination. When Israel got out, got out of line, they were kicked out of the land twice. The Babylonians exiled them. Actually, more than that, the, the Assyrians exiled the northern kingdom and the Babylonians exiled the southern kingdom. So when the Canaanites got out of the line, God kicked them out and gave their land to Israel. When Israel got out of line, God kicked them out and gave their land to a bunch of other people. As I showed in the previous video, when the king of Assyria took Israel out of the land and placed them, placed other people in their land. No discrimination. So if Israel was following the Torah, they would go about this a whole other way. Like I said, this is from a religious perspective. No, no politics here. From the Tanakh and the Quran. The land belongs to Israel. It shouldn't be divided up. And if you want to place the Philistines and the Pal Palestinians in the same on the same page of history. It's not going to end well for them. Take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. Exodus 34, 12. Take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you are going, lest there be a snare in your midst. What happened when Israel made a covenant and tried to make a peace agreement with the, the Palestinians and gave them Gaza? It was a snare to them. They got rockets in, in uh in a um, replacement for peace numbers 33 and 55 but if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you then it should be to, that those whom you let remain shall be irritants in your eyes and thorns in your sides and they shall harass you in the land where you dwell instead of making peace Israel should have got rid of them Hamas because they have been irritants and thorns in their sides in the land that they dwell.
true or false? Don't make it. You can't make an a cov make a covenant with the, the people of the land who not supposed to be there. Because if they wanted to be there, they got to live according to the rules of Israel. And if Israel was a, doing things according to the Torah, they wouldn't have all these problems as I've shown. It takes two to tango. But the land, which is the, the, the topic of this video, from a religious perspective, belongs to Israel. It does not belong to the Palestinians. So, with that being said, Actually, I'm going I'm to read this last part again because it's so relevant. If you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it should be that those whom you let remain, who you let remain, Israel kicked out their own people in Gush Katif and Gaza and let the Hamas remain. And they have been irritants in their eyes and thorns in their sides. And they have been harassing them ever since. You can't make this stuff up. So with that said, shalom to you. Read, study, pray, repent. And um, I'll see you next time.